Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for such a great introduction. I am so humbled to be here at St. Benedict's the African Catholic Church. Y'all are doing some good things over there in Inglewood. So I am grateful. I am humbled. I am honored. I am Angie Hosley from Chicago, native Chicagoan. And what keeps me grounded is that God would use me to inspire his people. That is truly a remarkable um, lot in life, right? But if you think about it, we are all Jehovah's Witness. Can I get a, a wave? Since we're all virtual, I'm gonna need you some thumbs up, some waves if you're feeling me. So COVID-19, although we are in the midst of it, this too shall pass. And what I am here today to do is to give you some encouragement, to practice some patience, to persevere, and to just keep walking in the light. We just saying that. But when you think about the title of this series, On Time God Online, never before have we understood the term on time God. Because God is always on time, isn't he? Like, it, he may not come when you want to, but he's always on time. And you have to remember that. And online, because if you think about where we are in the world and we're sheltering in place and social distancing and doing all kinds of, of things to keep our world and ourselves safe, the one place we would go would be the church. That was our safe haven. And now we can't even do that. So being connected this way, I think is such a brilliant idea. And please continue to support it. Please continue to log in because you need that connection. You have to be able to connect. And we are so interdependent upon each other. I think about that song, I Need You to Survive, like ever, never before in the history of whatever, have we realized that it does not matter what walk of life you're in. Doesn't matter if you're Catholic, if you're Christian, if you're Muslim, if you're Jewish, if you're white, if you're black, if you're Latino, we are all having a very shared real experience with this pandemic. Am I right about that? So never before has oneness, the connectedness of the human spirit, been so vitally important. So I just want to encourage you a little bit. This is my first time with you, so I have some ground rules. Um, hopefully it's not my last and you guys will invite me back. I, I don't want to upset the apple cart too much, but shared agreements is very, very important. So I rely on the age-old truth where two or more are gathered in the name of God. He is mighty in our midst. So right here, we have connected to each other. So I'm asking the Holy Spirit to show up and show out today. And I hope that's okay with y'all. Y'all look like a group that know how to get down with the Holy Spirit. So we're going to do this today. The other thing is I give all praises and honors to the Most High God. Because without God, we have nothing. We can talk about physical health all we want. But if you are not spiritually healthy and your wellness and the spirit isn't is a little shaky you got some some work to do so i want us to take just some breaths together right now to anchor ourselves to make sure that we are on the one accord so right here and now i want you to take a nice deep breath and as you inhale i want you to realize that this is the air that we breathe the very life of god in this moment and i want you to exhale anything that is unlike God's essential nature or character. If you know anything about God, you know that God is unconditional love and life and joy and abundance. So in each exhale, we're gonna do this three times just to anchor ourselves. I want you to pick a different aspect of God to focus on on your inhale. And exhale any anxiety. Anybody have anxiety during this time? I do. I freaked out when I went to the store last week and I was like, why am I freaking out? It's just in the world. So we know that we are not to be of in the world. We are supposed to be the ambassador of God, but we have to keep ourselves grounded. So I want us to inhale 
and exhale, and we'll do it three times. So let's do the first one. The first one I gave you, we're inhaling the life of God, the very breath. Feel that in your lungs. Let it expand you. You ready? Thumbs up? Couple nods. All right, so here we go. Inhale and exhale. And with each one, I want you to sink a little bit deeper. Inhale and exhale. This is our last one. Make it real good. Inhale and exhale. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, just for the air that we are breathing. So if you're like me, I am trying to find out or discover or have spirit revealed to me, what does all of this mean spiritually? Because we know that God is the underlying foundation of all that is, was, and ever will be. So even in the midst of this pandemic, God is here. We agree with that? Yes, God is still good. God is still on the throne. The government is still upon his shoulders. But me, as a spiritual being, I'm trying to figure out what does it all mean, right? What does this time in our lives mean right now? Anybody else feel that way? So what I've discovered is, are you tired of sheltering in place? I'm tired of it. Are you tired of being patient while you shelter in place? <laughs> I want us to know that practicing patience, and I'm not good at it at all. Like this is one of those things that I am truly practicing myself. And when the Holy Spirit inspired me to write this, I was like, oh, this lesson is for me. And I think about my spiritual mother, the Reverend Coleman, that used to say, lessons aren't taught, they're caught. So believe me, when you see a minister, a teacher, or a facilitator up in front of you, they've already caught that lesson because you cannot teach what you don't have. You can't give what you don't have. It just does not work like that. So we must continue to persevere and be persistent and be patient as we move through this experience. Must we keep trusting? Absolutely. So here, here we go. So our message today is all about persevering and being patient during a difficult season having unshakable faith in God. I see your faces. I know you got some unshakable faithers up in here, right? And this is our first time. So I want to make sure that you understand. I'm going to give you a little homework because it's okay to be inspiring. It's okay to have a motivational speaker. But if you don't have actual tools to help you when you are by yourself, you have nothing. Because let's, let's face it, this is an hour in a 24-hour block. And if you're like me, I'm sheltering solo. So the fact that I am by myself more times than not, I mean, I connect with my family, of course, on FaceTime. I am affectionately known as TT Angie too. I have a lot of little ones and I'm missing them. The greatest thing about children is that they have that wonderment. They have a natural joy that is just so contagious. And I miss that energy because I'm here by myself. But I am going to give you some practical tools at the end of this. And like Philip said, we will have some questions and answers if you want to ask me anything at the end. But I really do think that it is so vitally important that when you are by yourself, when the news has gotten on your last nerve, when our president, God bless him, is saying yet another thing that may or may not be true 99% of the time, it is not, that you have some practical tools that will help you navigate this experience. Is that okay? Thumbs up? <laughs> All right. So here we go. So I believe that the Bible is our story, right? It helps us navigate this human experience. It's the blueprint, our foundational guide to help us not only survive, but to thrive successfully through this thing we call life. So I want to invite you to open your Bibles, okay? 
So our text is taken from Hebrew 10, 36 through Hebrew 11, 3. And I'm going to read it. You need to persevere. Now, it did not say it would be nice. You probably should. It said you need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he promised. For in a little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. And by my righteousness, one will live by faith. How many know we walk by faith and not by sight? And I will take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. No surrender, no retreat is what it's talking about. But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to the ones who have faith and are saved. We got some, some, some faithful people here. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancient were commanded for. By faith, we understand that the universe, the universe was formed at God's command. So that what is seen was made out of what was invisible. Let's unpack that a little bit. Because I'm a firm believer that in all things get understanding. So it's one thing to read it and it's one thing to apply it. It does not say, it would be nice if. It says you need. When you think about need, that's something that you can't do without, right? That's something that has to be done. You need to persevere. It's a directive from our God to stay the course, be faithful, keep going. I was talking to one of my, okay, one of the things that I am so incredibly blessed by is that I have a group of amazing women that I call my mother. And my mom, uh, Mama Joyce, yesterday we were talking and she said that she had gone out for a walk and she hadn't really been exercising. And she said, I got tired. And my daughter said, come on, Harriet. How many know that Harriet Tubman lives in our DNA collectively because her spirit is still here? So when you have walked and you're tired. See, we're tired right now. We have been six weeks into this shelter and in place quarantine. We're tired of it. That's why people are breaking off and doing these protests because they're tired of it. But you have to have the spirit of, of Harriet and you have to keep going. That's what perseverance is. So I'm going to break down some terms for you. So patience, what is it? It's a virtue, right? That's what they tell me. I'm still working on it, y'all. I'm still working on it. But according to Webster, patience, the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting upset or angry. Let's talk about that word capacity. When you think about capacity, what do you think about? The amount of. So if you have a cup, an eight ounce cup of patience, mm, is that going to see you through this time? What if you have a gallon? Eh. But what if you have the unlimited resources and power of God? Do you think that you can have patience to survive this time right now? I think so. So what is your capacity? And I would invite you to explore that for yourself and unpack that for yourself and get a new revelation about what it means to be capable in the power of the almighty God. See, because we are made in God's image and likeness, so everything that the Father has is ours. I didn't say that. Jesus said it. Don't be looking at me crazy like I'm telling y'all something you don't know. You know that. So if you know that, it's time to now start relying on it. 
So let's talk about perseverance because I've loved that word. And I think about, I don't know who it was recently in our, our government, they said, but she persisted. How many know that sometimes you have to just persist? That's your perseverance right there. Persistence in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success. Hmm. Perseverance means to have a firm, didn't say soft, didn't say wobbly, a firm. When you think about firm, what do you think about? Foundation, strength built to last, a firm continuance in a course of action despite difficulty or opposition. I, I like that. So we have to have a steadfastness, unshakable faith in God during these times. We have to be patient, not only with ourselves, but patient with each other. We are all trying to navigate this new reality and there may be times when you want to snap out. Maybe you saints don't snap out, but this one sure does. You know, you get fed up and it's okay. But if you can practice the pause, as I call it, take a nice deep breath and in that moment, you can choose a different path. So I want to give you some tools. I hope you have a pen and a piece of paper to write things down because it's so important that you have skills, tools, and some navigational kind of wear to help you continue to be persistent, to be steadfast in your faith, to make sure that you are anchored in a real way to know that this too shall pass. It did not come to stay. And I know it feels like it's been forever, forever, ever, as they say, but everything comes to pass, good, bad, or indifferent. That's just how life works. And every day there are new blessings, new anointing, new mercies, that grace that God so freely gives us is renewed, not by anything that we've done, just because our God is good to us, right? So I want to start with hold the vision. How many know where there is no vision, the people perish? That's biblical. If you don't have a vision for yourself on the other side of this thing, I encourage you and invite you to start thinking about what your life looks like on the other side. I want you to hold the vision that you are divinely made in the image and likeness of God and divine health is your birthright. I want you to, every time you take a breath, this is the air I breathe. The very breath of God is filling my lungs. That's how you have to like be anchored in this. Hold the vision. One of my favorite visions that I am holding is that I get to see my Shapuka baby face, Miss Olivia Kennedy Motley, and we are going to kiss and hug like we always do because that is Titi's baby girl or my schnooks or j -Bay. Like my nephews and nieces bring me delight. And I am looking forward to the day when I can roll on the floor and get stuck like I used to. I ain't as young as I used to be, y'all. But you know what I mean? You have to have those visions. And if um, you don't know how to vision, I have a, a fail-proof way to do it. And I will make sure that Philip has it and can post it and you guys can use it. That is my gift to you because it is so important. Because where there is no vision, you will perish. And we don't want to perish. We didn't come this far just to get this far. God did not forsake us. We are still here. We are still believers in truth. We are still walking in the light. We are still being faithful to God's words. So hold the vision. Number two, affirmations. Affirmations is um, a personal statement of truth. I use affirmations all the time. I have them on my door. So when I leave my house, I actually stand there for a minute and read these four affirmations. And it's simple, it's easy, but you have to do it for yourself. So in those moments when you don't feel it, 
or the world is getting heavy on your shoulders. I carry tension in my shoulders and my neck. And sometimes I'm wearing my, my, my shoulders like earrings and I'm like, relax, 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 right? Have some affirmation. So one of mine is, I have come, it's biblical, so that you may have life and have it more abundantly. It didn't say a little bit of life, it said abundant. And when you think about abundance, that's a lot, right? That's more than I can sometimes conceive. That's an affirmation that I use. I am made in the image and likeness of God and there's provision on my life. Another affirmation, Jehovah Jireh, my provider, he is more than enough. An affirmation, get yourself 10 to 15 affirmations and I encourage you to put them on your mirror in the bathroom. So while you're washing your hands, you can read one or write them in your calendar or put them on your refrigerator. I'm about to social distance from my refrigerator, just so y'all know, six feet away. My refrigerator is like, there's nothing in here for you, girl. Like, put them where you will see them and where it can be a visual reminder of what you are made of. Because a lot of times the reason why we suffer is because we forget that we are children of God. If he cares about the lilies of the field, how much more important are you? That's how you have to walk through this experience. So get yourself some affirmations. Prayer. I love prayer. It's probably one of my all-time favorite topics. The other one would be forgiveness and then joy after that. But prayer is so important. Prayer is communion with God. That means that you are having an active conversation with God. Here's the thing. Things that are spiritual must be discerned spiritually. Prayer is the spiritual language of God. So when you think about maybe going to a different country, I'm not going to speak Spanish when I go to France. I'm going to speak French. So when you go to prayer, into that innermost secret place of the most high, you have to be spiritually led. Prayer is not beseeching or begging. It is a communion to say, you know what? I believe and trust and know that you got me, God. I know that before I was formed in my mother's womb, you knew what I needed in this exact moment. That's prayer. Standing firm on the promises. Now, if you don't really know what the promises of God are, start there. Discover for yourself. Love, the divine agape love, unconditional, is a promise of God. Provision, you are supported and adored. You are the beloved child of God. You have to know what the promises on your life are and declare those for yourself in prayer. Prayer has the ability to change your life. I have some believers, I know that I do. Who believes that prayer changes things? Because it does, it works, prayer works. Meditation. Let the meditation of my mouth and my heart be acceptable in your sight. Meditation is contemplating on the aspects of God, on all those things that you know to be true, getting so anchored in it. Meditation should be a way of life. You should take a good five to 10 minutes every day just to sit and say, okay, God, what do you have me for me today? And listen, because prayer is one thing. That's you talking to God. Meditation and sitting in the silence is God talking to you. How many know that God cannot get through to us because sometimes we are too busy in our minds, in our souls? The one thing that I, if I can say it, am grateful for during this time is that I have become so still, I can hear God so much more clearly. And if I can take anything away from this quarantine, I'm taking that. Where I am anchoring myself in real meditation every day, 
where I'm like, okay, use me. And really decreasing yourself so that the spirit of God could show up and show out. We said that earlier in the prayer that we are anchored and relying on that Holy Spirit to be with us, to guide us, to direct us. And we have to listen to that. We have to be open and aware that it exists. And the wonderful, beautiful thing about God is that God talks to us differently. Sometimes I hear music. I was so adamant with uh, Philip today. I said, we have to have music because music connects me in a way. Sometimes people see colors or they hear words or nature. If you want to know what God is up to, look outside. We have a real spring. There are buds on the trees. And once you anchor yourself into meditation, you get to notice all of that stuff. You get to notice that the ozone layer is the smallest it's been in 15 years. Don't miss that. There is a beautiful, amazing thing happening on this planet. It is healing itself because we are standing still. That's amazing. So be still. The sec, the the I got two more. So the the second to last one is be quiet. You know, I put myself on a holy hush uh, about seven or eight months ago, cause I f I felt like I was just talking to be talking. Anybody ever feel that way? Like I didn't really have anything important to say, but people were asking me stuff, and I was just talking. And how many times do we just talk to talk? Be quiet. Listen, be reflective. And the best thing about putting yourself on a holy hush is that you will only talk when it's absolutely necessary. That's a beautiful thing. But sitting in the silence and being comfortable with that. And stop talking to everybody about everything. Like we, we know what's happening in the world. There is no point in you calling your girlfriend and hearing it a thousand and four times again, what are you doing? Here's what I know to be true. As believers, as the ambassadors, as I said earlier of God, my grandmother used to say, you may be the only Bible that somebody reads. What does your life say about the kingdom? Because if you are talking the same talk that everybody else is talking, that's not your charge. Your charge is to say, you know what? Yes, I get it. It is a very difficult time, but the government is upon God's shoulders and I'm leaning into that. And I'm not saying negate the science. I'm not saying, because I believe God is in that science too. God is in the vaccine. God is in, in everything that the doctors and nurses and first responders are trying to do to keep us safe. But if you are not talking about that and you're talking about the virus, I, I want us to be different. I want us to move differently. I want us to operate differently, but because here's the truth. Someone is looking to you, St. Benedict the African, to be that Bible that they're not gonna pick up, but they may call you and say, well, what do you think about? And what are you gonna say? Are you gonna relay them back to the promises of God? Or are you gonna chime in and say, girl, you know what? Mm, now is not the time for the girl you know what now is the time for yes i understand what you are saying but the reality is god is and always will be still in control i say that often to a lot of people and i know they get tired of it but it keeps me anchored in my truth it keeps me walking by faith and not by sight it keeps me being persistent and persevering through this experience it keeps me patient within myself that's what the world needs. Doesn't need another naysayer. I read somewhere a little meme, you know, I like these little memes now, that said, Noah looked crazy until it started raining. You might look crazy talking about the goodness of God right now. But on the other side of it, who will we be? Who will we become? We've been through some stuff already. This too shall pass. It didn't come 
to take us down. God did not forsake us. So if you're not going to talk about the kingdom of God during this time, if you're not going to anchor yourself in truth and the Bible and the promises, just be quiet. Because the world has enough people talking about what's happening in the world. Okay? All right. The last one, and this is probably the most important one. Remember that you are loved and supported by God's grace. God's grace is sufficient upon itself. It needs nothing. And that's what you are loved and supported by. You have to know and believe that. When Philip reads that line, I always say, thank you, God, in my bio, I'm a living, breathing testament to the power of God's grace being sufficient. Here's a secret, and so are you. You would not be on this call if you were not. You wouldn't be. You know and understand how grace has sustained you even before you knew it was grace. I always say I'm standing on my grandmother's prayers. Even before I knew what prayer was, there was somebody praying for me. There's somebody praying for you. There's somebody that has prayed for you. And you have overcome some amazingly difficult things. And on the other, other side, you just say, thank you, God, for keeping me when I couldn't keep myself. Thank you, Grandma, for praying for me when I couldn't pray for myself. Thank God for grace and being supported by it. Amen. All right. So I just have a few more things. Of course, I want to close us out in prayer, but I want to give you the scripture before I pray. So this is taken from Romans 12, 12. Rejoice in hope. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Continue in instant prayer. So I want you to just close your eyes, take a nice deep breath, and right here and right now, I recognize God is that underlying principle and energy of everything that is, was, and ever will be, our spiritual integrity of the whole entire universe and world. This energy and essence of divine love and joy and peace right here and now. I know that I am one with this energy and essence. It is who I am as a divine child of the Most High God. And the truth is, if it's true for me, it's absolutely true for every person on this call. For we are all interdependent upon this thing that we call oneness. We are interdependent upon God. So right here and right now, I know that the Holy Spirit is here with us, moving mighty in our midst. And I speak this prayer knowing that we are patient. We have the wherewithal to persevere. We are made of good stuff because God is our Father. And as we continue to move through this experience, we rely and know that the government is upon his shoulders. And there is nothing for us to do except to lean not into our own understanding, but get in tune and aware and alive in the spirit of God. There is nothing for us to do but to know that difficult times didn't come to stay. This too shall pass. And we rejoice in hope. We are patient in the tribulation. We persist and keep moving through this experience knowing that God's got us. God's got us. And it is perfectly okay for us to know, stand firm, and walk by faith and not by sight. We are so grateful for this awareness and knowing the God we serve is a beautiful, amazingly loving, caring God. So I release this prayer knowing that my words never come back to me void. For life and death is in the power of the tongue. And I know 
that with the full authority of who I am, this prayer has already been answered in the mind of God. It goes forth and it blesses and blesses and blesses. And in Jesus' mighty name, we say amen and amen. Thank you, St. Benedict. It has been my pleasure, my pleasure, my pleasure.